buddy. Cowards do that and that ain't you. You're better than that. What's up? Otaku and Gamer Nation, it's your boy Oda King Live coming at you again for another Pickups of the Week episode. And this week, or at the very least this episode, I'm going to be focusing mostly on the games. I picked up quite a bit of manga and anime and figures and stuff, so if you're interested in that, be sure to check out the other video I'll be uploading very soon because I'm going to be focusing pretty much solely on that. So games in this one... And make goodies in the other one. So, without further ado, let's get right into this bad boy. I was hitting up the uh, hitting up the old uh, game shops and the old pawn shops, and you know, I got I got a couple things here. I got a, I picked up a couple things from you know the EB and a few other locations, and let's just see what kind of deals I got uh, over the last week or two, probably two. Uh, so first off, let's let's see if we can get a little bit of a zoom up in on this bad boy. This is Yoshi's Topsy Turvy for the Game Boy Advance. I've heard of this game, but that was about it. I've never actually played it or frig, maybe even seen it. Uh, because honestly, this whole gray back and green front really didn't look familiar to me. So when I saw it, I was like, you know what? I'm not a big fan of buying without the box, but at what is that there? Let's see if we can we can do a we can do a zoom in on that price there. See if we'll focus. There we go. At $14.99, I mean it's a little steep to be without the box, but whatever. It's a good display game that you can just put right in the front of all your loose carts, and I think it looks really nice. So I don't know. I had to have it, so I bought it. Now next up, uh, I was at a different game shop here for a little bit. And he got in a whole bunch of games that, you know, from whoever. And he pretty much just stuck with the price that was on the cover of these, which were $1.99 if, uh, yeah, you can sort of see that. So, at buck ninety nine, I got Fighter's Destiny on the 64. Plus, I got Jeremy McGrath's uh, Supercross 2000. I mean, it's a motocross game, so, you know, nothing wrong with that. And then it was also a uh, red cart, which is also very nice. So... At two bucks, uh, you know, even without a box, you can't really go wrong. Now, at that place also, I was doing a big deal at the time, and I'll get to the other half of that deal uh, in the end. But I had to come up with something else to buy, so I picked up this uh, Spyro Original Black Label. Uh, he wanted 20 for it, but, you know, I got it for 15 Did the old uh, bundle deal, talked him down a bit. It's pretty minty fresh, uh, no complaints there. And uh, it's a nice uh, welcome addition to my my PlayStation collection, which uh, is right there if you may or may not see. So, and then while I was also at that same place, uh, the local place too, I may as well just skip to doing his place. I picked up these. Unfortunately, I didn't get the deal I thought I was getting. It's uh, Soul Calibur and Call of Duty on the PSP. Ones that I've never really seen too many times. I mean, there's certain PSP games that I'll see everywhere I go. These two are not them. So honestly, at 10 bucks each, and I think he ended up giving them to me for uh, 8 bucks each, which is fair. But I thought they were going to be a little... I flipped the manuals over. No, a little more rare than that. I than what I was thinking. So I ended up going to the other big pawn shop in next town over. And uh, they were only selling for like 13 bucks each. So really, I mean, you know... I didn't get the deal that I thought I was getting, but hey, uh, cheaper is cheaper at the end of the day. And finding PSP games, period, to add to the collection is always a welcome addition because PSP is kind of hard to find. Outside of online ordering, of course. Now, at the same place, again, he had Wii games. So I got this Lost in Shadow, which I've never even heard of, but it was made by Hudson, which... You know, it was uh, one of my old-time faves back in the NES days. So I was like, what the heck? He wanted, uh, I think, 12 bucks for it. Yeah, eleven ninety nine there. So I picked it up. No real idea about what it's about. Something about light and dark. But outside of that, I also got Final Fantasy Echoes of Time on the Wii. Now this... I don't even know if I knew this existed. I knew Crystal Chronicles existed. Was it on the Game Boy? I don't know. But uh, Crystal Chronicles here, uh, Echoes of Time for 10 bucks, And I don't have a price check on this one. However, I checked this one out at the other pawn shop again. And they wanted like $25 for it. So I think I got it for 10 
certainly a, a great deal. And I'm assuming this at 10 is probably a good deal because any Final Fantasy cheap is always a good deal. Now, flipping back to uh, the other store where I got Topsy Turvy there, Yoshi, I also picked up Spirit Camera on the 3DS, finally. Uh, it's been on my list for I don't know how many years. I've been trying to get it. I just didn't want to pay a lot of money for it, so I finally picked it up for $9.99 there, 10 bucks. So, there it is. So, you know, now I can finally play my... Uh, my poltergeist game on the on the go with the 3ds so i'm pretty excited about it if i remember correctly it is um you know it's a spin-off of oh that other series on ps2 and xbox that i can't remember right now and um because of course you know it can't be named after it either so now i can't remember what it's called and then uh one day we went up to the flea market and I actually picked this up. It's the Japanese version of Breath of Fire 3, uh, the PlayStation. Now, this is another situation of the guy didn't really know what he had. He was all like, oh, it's a Japanese game. You know, you're probably not interested in it. And I was like, bro, I'm interested in Japanese games. Hook me up. So I dug it out of his little back area. And, you know, it's pretty mint. It's pretty complete. I really have no complaints there, even the spine there. And uh, so he's like 10 bucks. So I was like, you know, 10 bucks for any Breath of Fire is always good, especially, you know, any import usually. So really, I thought it was getting a slightly better deal than I thought. Checked it out on eBay. It only sells for like 15 or something. So really, a little disappointing, but hey, um, whatever. I can throw it in my Japanese pile. Now, next up is another PSP game. Now, I picked this up from the, uh, the more expensive pawn shop. God's Eater Burst. Um, I believe an anime is coming out uh, on this recently, like this year. Uh, the one with the, the giant weapons, I believe. So, you know, at first you can't even really tell, but when you flip it over, you can tell, you know, the anime characters, things like that. So I was like, oh, well, it looks great. I got to have it, and it uh, only $9.99. I mean, I'll take PSP games uh, $9.99 uh, that are, you know, semi-uncommon all day. So, hook me up. And then uh, at another uh my local areas, I was rolling around. I picked up Naval Ops Commander on the PlayStation 2, don't mind that. I think I actually did pay $3, even though I'm pretty sure that's a yard sale sticker. And uh, Yu-Gi-Oh! Dawn of Destiny here for around $3 too, I believe. Now, Naval Ops is a Koei game, so as Koei is one of my favorite developers, uh, I certainly don't mind buying Koei games. And Yu-Gi-Oh! Unfortunately, it's an old Rogers video rental. It's pretty beat up to hell, but um, you know, whatever. It's a welcome addition to my collection, so I was happy to have it. Now, uh, some EB pickups, just some basic nonsense. I got this Amiibo Festival here. It was uh, marked down to $5, so I said, why the hell not? And God knows I'll probably never play it, but hey, uh, when stuff's on discount like that, you don't say no. And then I got a few more EB deals at cheap, cheap prices, but... I don't know where they are right now, so for now, we'll just skip it and we'll go to the well borderline main event. Be right back. Alright, we are mobile for this one because uh, these are big and bulky and kind of in the way. So these are uh, Assassin's Creed collectibles, uh, figures, that I bought from EB Games, you know, GameStop. Now, they're marked down nicely. I believe the original price was $49.99. And even you can see there, uh, this one was marked down to $9.99. And then uh, we got, I believe, $8.99 here. So, I also am like, you know, an Onyx member, or whatever. I got 15% off. So, these were like $8 each. Now, I have not played this Assassin's Creed. I'm not sure what version this is. Um, but we got Maria and Agu Aguilar, I believe. And you know what? Anytime figures like this, especially in box, you know, minty fresh condition, are like 10 bucks or under. I'm not going to say no. I almost bought two of each just to have an extra one so I could open it up and, you know, play around with it. But at the end of the day, I was kind of poor, so I only bought the one of each. And honestly, they were still there for a while later. I really can't believe they weren't picked up pretty fast. But either way, I also bought... And this is, of course, getting to the main event. This is what I picked up at my local place. This is what the big deal was about right here. The ColecoVision inbox and the ColecoVision steering wheel, which you know what? Let's give a lift up here. 
Oh God, they're breaking my camera. All right, I'm gonna block the, block the glare here a bit. All right, so we got the original ColecoVision box. Now this is a, you know, it's not 100% box, but it's pretty minty fresh. I mean, it has got its full colors. It was obviously stored nicely. Not in the sun, not water damaged. It had, you know, a little tear here and there. Uh, you can see right there that I taped up nicely to keep it from tearing more. And uh, the steering wheel, same situation. There was like a right tear right, right across the top there, which kind of sucked. But uh, I taped it up nicely. And, uh, you know, they're mint. Now, what's really nice about these is that, of course, not just is it, you know, the ColecoVision and everything about it, but it's got the styrofoam inserts and... You know, if you're a collector, you know, getting your NES, Super NES, anything with the styrofoam insert is half the battle. Because usually people would just pitch them. Now, the really nice thing, and I'm going to try to do this carefully without this whole thing exploding, about this Coleco one, is that it actually says ColecoVision in the styrofoam. It is actually pressed into it. That is amazing. Which, you know, boom, you know, you know you're dealing with some legit styrofoam. And uh little old lady sold it to the guy at the shop. Didn't even know what she had. Uh thought it was a, a computer. And uh he actually gave her a pretty good price for it. So I had to really bargain with him for it. But uh I got it down pretty good. Ended up doing a deal. And, uh, yeah, came out with that and the steering wheel. Now, he had the larger um, joystick controllers, too, in box, but he wanted to keep them for his other console. So, I did not get those. But, hey, there's always another day because, you know what, in this small town I live in, the, there's not a lot of big of a market for it. So, more than likely, I'll end up picking them up at a later date. So, anyways, that's it for now. Leave a like if you liked anything you saw. Leave a comment below if, you know, let me know what you picked up recently. And, uh, you know, let's talk. And uh, if you feel like checking out my anime one, be sure to check that out. It's coming up soon. And uh, feel free to check out my other junk. Got lots of uh, interesting retro and other, uh, you know, fan crap up there. And uh, I'll talk to you next time. Peace.